today's video is sponsored by the OneFootball app. If you haven't done it already, head down to the description before this video starts, click the link and download it completely free of charge on iOS or Android. Ladies and gents, welcome back to another episode of the Cholton Athletic Career Mode. Now, in the last episode, we actually managed to work our way up to 7th in the championship table. Obviously, this is our first season back in the championship and we are heading for hopefully a top six finish if we can really, really have a good, strong season. We did beat Millwall by a hefty, hefty scoreline last time. I'm sure you will remember. Um, and we are about to get into this match against Swansea. So this is going to be a very strong championship side. Let's have a look where they are in the league. So they're actually down there in 14th place. But despite the fact that that's where they are, they are actually only one point behind us, which is, you know, just it just signifies a really, really tight championship table. The bottom three actually being cut away there. Um, or sorry, the bottom four, QPR, Reading, Wigan and Millwall. Uh, but yeah, in the mid table and even up towards the top of the table, it's very, very tight. So this is all to play for here. Let's get into this game against Swansea and see if we can pull off a win. So Toby Bell over in Paraguay has drawn my attention to four players. So Lissandro Vieba, we knew about him in the last month's report. We are still keeping an eye on him. 17 years old, looks like a right winger or a right midfielder. He's a 71 to 93 overall. And in fact, Cristobal Roldan, Jaquan Segura and Eugenio Arnaiz. That's my best guess of how to pronounce these names, guys. I'm, I do apologize if anybody is Paraguayan or something and challenges my pronunciation, but they're all 93 and 94 potential rated so we're going to leave them all to be scouted a little bit further hopefully none of them kick up a fuss so here we go it is Swansea that we're up against here you can see Huddersfield Preston Sheffield Wednesday Brentford all on equal points to us so we do need to get the three points here otherwise I'm, I'm afraid we will be rolling down considerably uh, down the table Swansea City line up like this some very dangerous names that I know even from the Premier League days Swansea only in the Premier League a couple of seasons ago, of course. And uh, you can see Asoro up front, Routledge, Selina, Shinny, Fur, and Carroll midfield, Ulmer and Lewis at fullback, Harries and Retsos uh, in central defence with Zabre in goal. Let's turn our attention to Cholton. And it is going to be, of course, another unchanged side because we are on a nice bit of hot form right now. De Boer in goal, Deke still right back, Earl at left back, Pierce and Foyt. At the moment, really playing well for me in central defence. Aribo, Forster, Kaski, and Tariq Fosu at the tip of the midfield. Grant, uh, Diaz, and of course, Diego Lanes up front for us. Let's go. Give him the ball straight away to Asoro here. Is he going to release somebody? He's going to take it out to the wing. He's going to try and put a cross in at some stage, I would assume. And he's he got a lot of space here, and he's fired it in. It beat De Boer, but it also beat the post. And that is an early sign that Swansea are a dangerous attack inside here. Look at that from the number 16 slammed his laces through that ball and just wide of the post. Grant wins the header over to Brahim Diaz. The touch was a bit loose, but we have, uh, we've kept the ball. Here comes Aribo. Aribo knocking it over to Tariq Fosu. Fosu with the little dummy inside. He tries to keep the ball. He does, but we haven't got too many obvious options. Here's Aribo knocking the ball to Diaz. It's Carlin Grant with his left foot. Oh, it dips, but just again, just like that Swansea chance early on in the game, just wide inches of the post. Let's have a look at that left foot. Over it goes. Was it wider than I thought? Yeah, probably a little bit wider than I thought, but still a decent effort. Force to cast it to Aribo. To Diaz. Brahim Diaz with his first goal, hopefully, for us. Hits the bar. And we managed to do a dummy here. Come on, let's. Force to Kaski left foot, and it just dribbles through to Zabre. Come on, we need to put the ball in the back of the net. We are threatening very much so here. Got the ball again, it's Tariq Fosu. And Tariq Fosu, do you want the return? You do, it's a right footed shot, another chance to hit the ball. We win the header and it goes wide of the goal. This is so unlucky from Cholton here. We're bombarding the Swansea net, look at that. That looks on target at that point, but it just swerved. The trajectory just changes and it spins wide of the goal. And we've hit the ball twice now before that as well. Got the ball here with Brahim Diaz. He's played all right for us so far. Uh, it's Tariq Fosu. Goes with the easy option inside. Forced the Kaski to Grant. Didn't want that pass, but we've managed to get away with it. We still have the ball with Carlin Grant. That is, not, again, not the pass I wanted to make. But it is half time, and we do go in with the scores level. I feel like that was our half, really. We played better than Swansea. Swansea had a couple of chances, a couple of decent chances, but Charlton hit the bar twice. And uh, Grant had a one-on-one, -on -one, which he should have converted. And it is nil-nil here. At, I think we are away here, aren't we? Yeah, so at Swansea's ground, I think it's called the Liberty Stadium. 
Uh, so very unfortunate at the moment. We should be winning, but we're not. Will Swansea turn it on in the second half? Bloody hope not. Free kick's going to come into the box now. Can we get it away? Forster Kasky does work it up to Tariq Fosu. We're going to play it to Carlin Grant. Carlin Grant is going to sprint straight through the middle here. He's got strength and he's got pace and he's got the pass to find Tariq Fosu. Now, have we got the finish? Tariq Fosu has got the finish. Grant turns provider there. And Tariq Fosu has the finishing touch for us to take us 1-0 up at the Liberty Stadium against Swansea. And we do do a nice little dance to number 11 to match the goal. And this is going to be a really big game. This is a statement in this league because we're beating a team that's recently relegated from the, from the Premier League. Uh, and one of the best, probably, squads in the league. And nice finesse. We've been working on his shooting, as I said previously. Tariq Fosu. Bosh, in the back of the net. Keeper had no chance there, really. For Rebo. Are we going to play Grant through here? We do manage to get the through ball all the way up to him, and he gets on the end of it as well. He's got pace. Colin Grant, has he got the finish? He has got the finish. That is 2 0. Colin Grant with some nice direct football there. And he, d d d I don't know why I'm in a really dancey celebration mood today, but Colin Grant with his left peg shows us that he can do it despite that probably slight knock to his confidence earlier when he missed that one-on-one -on -one. but bang in the bottom left hand corner and we do go 2-0 up and the two goals quite close together in time in there really nice actually do you know what maybe the keeper could have done better there but we'll take it deep still looking for grant again grant's going to get on the end of this again and i can see brahim diaz in there and we do still have the ball colin grant over here to force the and it's going to be Diaz into Joe Aribo. Aribo pokes it through. And that is the third goal for us. Is it onside? It is onside. And who is that? Is that Jay Fulstakaski who is doing the Sebo? I think it was Fulstakaski who put it in. I think, yeah. Yes, it is indeed. And we go 3-0 up at Swansea. What an emphatic result this is. And I'm finding my rhythm in this 4-3-3, guys. I have, to, I have to tell you. Look at that. Aribo kept possession, played the ball through. And Forster Kasky smacked it home with his left peg there from very close range. Keeper again, no chance. And as the ball goes out of play here, we are going to make a double substitution. 66 minutes have been played and purely for fatigue reasons, Brahim Diaz and Joe Rebo leave the field to be replaced by Calvin Stengs and Colin Barto as well. So good like for like substitutions and good quality players that will hopefully help us see this game out. And here goes the full time whistle surely in a moment once we get this up the pitch a little bit more. And Jason Pierce with the final touch of the game and that game makes me extremely happy. And I told you guys, wait for the 4-3-3. It will come through for me. The, uh, sorry, not Diego Lanez. Carlin Grant will come into some goal scoring form and he has certainly uh, been very good for me in the last four or five games. And he has scored, I think three or four goals this season now. Uh, six shots there he put one of them in uh, it would have been a lot worse if he didn't put any of them in but yeah Colin Grant is looking like a dangerous dangerous championship striker at the moment and it was all Charlton born and bred players or not born and bred but Charlton players that we started off the career mode with Grant Fosu and Forster Kasky they, they're not signings that I've made they are all Charlton players even in real life and that is a very positive result away at Swansea at a very much higher level as well than we started so this championship campaign um, I, I, I imagine the result is going to fluctuate, but at the moment we are on a great bit of form and we deserve that 3-0 win to be perfectly honest. And the player ratings are as follows, a 9 for Grant, a 9.2 for Forster Kasky, man of the match. Who got the assists for us? One from Forster Kasky, one from Grant and one also from Joe Aribo. Uh, Aribo got an 8.7, Diaz got a 7.8 and you, obviously you can just see the ratings, I won't read them all out. 7s, 6s, 8s and 9s, basically a really good performance and the subs came on. Didn't make too much impact, but certainly helped us see the game game out our stats for the match as well show that we were probably slightly the better attacking team but for me fair result and we probably uh met, well we may have moved up into the top six after that look at that we are now fourth in the table it doesn't mean a whole lot because we are still only three points clear of 12th place but that win, hugely significant for us. Wolves, Stoke and West Brom, the only better team so far this season in the championship. Bristol City with a game in hand. And our next opponents down here are Cardiff City, who are struggling for form. 14 points and in 19th place. So hopefully we can get a result there as well. I think it will be at the Valley. Let's find out in a moment. And it will be at the Valley. So let's get into this game. I think we're going to sim it. Do we need to rotate the squad at all I don't think so everybody's absolutely on fire for me um, everyone's really you know gelling well together the mixture of players that we inherited players that we signed last season and new players that we signed this season so we're going to get into this game against Cardiff hopefully oh Tariq Fossey picks up an injury in the first minute that is not a good sign 
Uh, they do have some good players actually at their disposal, Cardiff, Hoylet. Uh, and they actually take the, the, the lead through Coup, but we do equalise through Juan Foyt. Uh, a draw, I don't want to keep drawing at home, I feel like we should be probably nicking this game at this point. The, the squad is good enough, but let's see what the remaining 15 minutes or so hold for Charlton here and Cardiff. Is anybody going to nick a goal? They're not going to, and we do take a point. Better than a loss, but I was hoping for something a little bit more. Grant doesn't seem to perform too well when I sim the games. So maybe there's a stat that he's lacking that the game isn't really making him score many goals. Um, but we do have some player development to, to keep working on. So I'll keep doing that for Grant as well in different things like strength and dribbling and stuff like that to make him a better well-rounded player. I know I keep talking about Grant a lot, but I do want to make one of our own born and bred players go all the way with us when I eventually, hopefully, get us to the Champions League. May take three seasons, may take four seasons, however long it takes. Tariq Fosu here suffered a torn hamstring and will be out for six weeks. That is a huge, huge loss, actually. He has been one of our star players. Um, so that is difficult, difficult news to hear, but we probably can just rotate the squad a little bit and deal with that, I hope. And there are going to be no more games in the month of October, which means I can now look at who is going to be my player of the month. So I've got three players here on the shortlist. One is going to be uh, Jason Pierce, who I believe has scored two goals. I think they both came in October, or one might have not, but he's come up with goals. He's been really solid in the games I've played with him as well. And I think we've had a couple of clean sheets, at least one this, uh, this, uh, this month. So Jason Pierce is a nomination. The next player is going to be Tariq Fosu, who just got injured. Nine goals and three assists this season. He, with a 7.1 overall average in the championship as well. He is really on fire. Such a shame we've got to lose him. But again, remember, I do want to buy him back when we are able to. Carlin Grant is the third nomination. And actually, I think he is going to be the winner for this because he has scored three goals in October. He's really found, you know, we stuck, we, we kept our faith with Grant because he, he wasn't playing great um, up until very recently. And he scored three goals this this uh, this month in the in the most recent games as well. And he just looks like he's really becoming a good championship striker and proving to me that he can do it at this level. So Carlin Grant is going to take the award of player of the month for October. So into the youth squad here in the youth academy. And we do have Li Zheng here whose potential is a 72 to 78. I don't think we're going to sign him or, or, or promote him or anything like that. So I am going to release him and now we are done with all the Chinese youth prospects and it is going to be Paraguayans now coming in hopefully soon. Um, and probably next time we get a report for the Paraguayans, we'll probably uh, upgrade or, or at least sign a few of them to the youth squad. But we have this game now against Wigan Athletic. So let's, let me have a look at the squad I'm going to go for and who I'm going to swap in for Tariq Fosu and then we will get into it. Right, so what I've done is I've given Lanez the CAM role that Tariq Fosu had. He's gone up to a 76 now, so he should be really, really levels above a lot of championship players here. Stings, we have managed to get his finishing up to a reasonable standard. So as you can see, it's 61. It's still not the best. We're still working on it, but... It's better than like 55 or whatever he came to the club uh, with in terms of his finishing stat. So he gets a start and Brahim Diaz stays on the left with Grant up front. So I'm hoping that'll work. Uh, let's get into this game against... Who are we playing? I can't remember now. That's it, Wigan. Let's get into this game against Wigan. We're pretty much fully fit. Uh, an unfortunate loss to the squad, Tariq Fosu-wise. But let's get into this game. Stengs, can you provide a goal for me? Now that we've worked a little bit on your finishing. 0-0 in 20, 20 minutes played in the game. Foyt has been booked in the 30th minute. Diego Lanez really enjoying that central role, it would seem, as he scored for us and put us 1-0 up. Suzuki comes on for Stengs. Maybe Stengs hasn't had the best game there. Uh, Foyt gets sent off, but nonetheless, Aribo puts us 2-0 up here. So Foyt with two yellows, which means he's only going to be out for one game. And they pull one back in the 80, 89th minute. But we get another away victory and Charlton are really taking the championship by storm at the moment. I'm fortunate that we have uh, Foyt out now because we're going to have to... I mean, we're not exactly lacking centre-backs, but I mean, he's a really, really good player for us. But that is going to be it for this episode, guys. We are now up to third place in the championship and Wolves are really running away with this league. 35 points. They are uh, eight points clear of second place, even Stoke and 10 points clear of Charlton and Brentford, who sit in third and fourth. So at the moment, we're, we're pretty solid up in the playoff spots there. Could we push even for automatic? I don't know if we're going to be able to keep this kind of form up, but we certainly have a really good squad, and we are on... Uh, we, we've just found a, a nice formation, a nice rhythm, and a nice combination of players that complement each other 
very, very well. So that is going to be it, like I said, for this video, guys. Make sure you leave a like on this one, hit the subscribe button, and also hit the notification bell for me. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves, and sweet!